Every place is the story of its own becoming. Any place that has existed over some thousands of years and in its past had heat and drought generated an ecosystemic response to that kind of change, has it embedded in it to do it all over again. This is the first project I've done in the absence of Helen, my wife of 65 years, and we made art together for 50 of those years, and we scaled up from making our first works in 70 to 72 defined urban farming. And then we moved to larger landscapes. So therefore we began to make a criticism and offer a solution simultaneously and interwoven. And that's what Future Garden is and all our present work is. It has been very inspiring to work with Professor Harrison. He has this great vision of um, you know, looking towards the future and thinking about large ecological problems in context of climate change. Gardens are about change, and the fact that this installation explicitly addresses long-term environmental change is an interesting challenge for a gardener. Inside the domes, we've planted 16 different species. They're primarily coastal species that are local to this area. Future Garden seeks species that have the following properties. They should be resilient, mostly drought tolerant, part medicinal and part edible, and part the basis of food chains for birds and butterflies above all. And the constant is the heat. The temperature is around 10 degrees warmer than outside of the domes. And the three different domes will have different watering regimes to test the effects of drought. It will be more rainy, less rainy, or erratically rainy, and that's what happens in each dome. We do not expect all species to live. We expect some to die out and intelligent replacement to happen. The end game here is to invent the scaffolding that can self-complicate and move into the environment where many species will be dying from the heat. We think this is a form that we gift to the environment. So a future garden is really a garden of the future that can be invented by local botanists and everyday folk. The UC Santa Cruz Arboretum and Botanic Garden is the ideal location for an installation of this sort. Otherwise, it would be just another temporary art installation. And with the work we've done here, with the domes themselves and the thought of the planting, this could go on for decades. That couldn't happen elsewhere than an educational institution. Professor Harrison has taken this big idea and he's embodied it physically. I never imagined that I would be working on an art exhibit. <laughs> I consider myself more of a scientist, but I also appreciate the influence that art and the power that art has to convey science.